love you and we praise you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for what you want to do in our midst this morning. We, we continue to submit to you, Lord. You have drawn us as we've worshipped, as we blessed you, as we lifted up your name, as we turned our hearts to you. We want to we want to keep our eyes fixed on you right now, and we want to hear your word so that we can be transformed, that our lives will be transformed. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for your anointing, the anointing to speak your word, the anointing to hear your word, the anointing for each one of us to hear from you this morning and follow you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And again, I want to thank you, those of you who are listening either watching this again because you're here and then you watch it later. And those who are just catching us online, I want to say thank you. I trust that, that as you hear the word of God, I encourage you, put everything aside. Put all, put up, don't try to go wash dishes or change laundry and uh, working on the car and things like that. Take a few moments, put everything aside, and let's hear from God. Amen? Amen, amen. We're going to continue in um, a series a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I uh, started with seed for thankfulness. Seed for thankfulness. And remember, the word of God is seed, right? The word of God is seed. And if we truly want to be living a life of thankfulness, if we truly want to be thankful without, um, how should I say, how many of y'all want to, when you get squeezed, you would like good things to come out? Amen? I mean, can, we, can anybody admit that sometimes you get squeezed in certain areas and maybe Thanksgiving doesn't come out? You know, sometimes we get squeezed and we got to count to ten. And there's nothing wrong with having to count to ten. But how many of you can look forward to much fruit and that when you get squeezed, the goodness of God comes out, the thankfulness of God, the, 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 your heart stays fixed on him? Instead of the problem or the vice that happens to be squeezing you at that moment. Amen? Because we've all been squeezed. We've all been pressured. And we're not promised a life of, of unpressure. We're actually promised that those who live godly will face persecution. And so if that's all we face is persecution, there's tribulation. And we know that too. And, but just, just for a moment, just think if all you face this next week is persecution... If that is all, when you're squeezed, will thankfulness come out? Well, can you be thankful? Not thankful for the bad thing, thankful through the bad thing, thankful in the bad situation, thankful to God's goodness. Thank you that he is with us and that, that he is supplied. You, you realize he supplies because we have a lack. Does that make sense? If you have a lack of patience... He supplies patience, but patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And you don't get fruit without seed. You don't get fruit without seed going in, dying, having pressure around that seed. And then that seed began to come forth and bear fruit in our lives. And I, I want to walk with a group of people who, who are thankful because I believe thankfulness just breeds more thankfulness. It breeds faith. I think it literally is what puts faith in action. You can't be unthankful and in faith at the same time. That's a different message for a different time. Hallelujah. So go with me to, this may be a familiar scripture, and it may not, but we will primarily have one main scripture I want us to look at this morning. So I'm going to attempt to keep it easy on you. Go with me to Psalms 103. Psalm 103. And we'll start in verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now, like last week, I want to continue with your permission. And if you missed last week, I encourage you to go back, catch it online, catch us on YouTube. Do what you have to do. It's going to help you. But um, if you'll give me permission this morning, I won't, I won't put you under a bus. Those of you who haven't given me permission to put you under a bus, there's a few that let me. And the rest of you, I will not. 
But if you'll give me permission to get up in your business a little bit this morning, I want to help you with your business. And basically what I mean by that is I really do want to get up in your business. What does your fellowship with God look like? Two fellows in a ship. It could be two f uh, God, remember God, okay, and you. God and you looking at each other face to face. What does that look like? Wherever that is in your life, I want to help you grow. I want it more. We want more fellowship with God. And out of that fellowship with God, we bear fruit. If, we, if there's no fellowship, biology, okay? Does that just kind of bring everybody on the same page? Okay, good. Hallelujah. The, the young people left, so if I need to go in there and explain it, I will. But I think we're all old enough to do that. All right, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who has, look at verse 3. I'm going to read a little bit, and then we're going to back up. Verse 3, who, who forgives all our iniquities. Now, oh, keep on, Paul, a little bit farther. Who heals all your diseases, who has redeemed your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back up to verse 1. When was the last time you, remember, you, you, if you've given me permission, we're going to get in, we're going to just get right in that, that fellowship boat. What does your, when was the last time you got into the, to the presence of God? Now, a few minutes ago isn't going to count because we were all there. What you did. No, but no, okay, okay, I take that back. It can count because we want it to count in the future. When you're in the presence of God, do you command your soul to bless the Lord? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It, they tag in... Um, your uh, personality, it, it's, it's a part of it. I, I, it doesn't flow as well to say that, but your mind, your will, your emotions, your personality. The writer here said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. When was the last time you literally stopped what you were doing and commanded your soul to bless the Lord? And why? And how? And what did that look like? You go, well, we just, uh, yeah, look at, look what happens when the writer does this. See, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We put seed in your heart a couple of weeks ago about being thankful. I'm going to water that seed. We're going to get some, some growth out of that seed. We're going to believe God for some thankfulness to rise up. Look at this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I don't know about you, but I've walked into the presence of the Lord and immediately thoughts of doubt, unbelief, fear, stupid, check the coffee. Did you turn off the toaster? You have to go pee. You have to go do this. Did you call in late? All these dumb thoughts come to mind when you're like, I'm trying to pray. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pray. And then all of a sudden, you've got all these other thought processes. How do you get away from that? Well, let's get, look at what he said in verse 1. Well, 2, he says it too. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You've got to command your soul. Command your, um, your mind. Command your emotions. Command them to go, no, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, I'm purposely not giving you something here. How many of y'all see it? Uh, connect, did, okay, we'll get there. And forget not all his benefits. Now look at the benefits. Are those semicolons right there? No. Were those semicolons? So doesn't that mean like coming up next? Doesn't that what semicolon means in the end of the benefits? Those of you who do English and grammar and all that charting. Verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities? Now I found this encouraging. I'll tell them that later, Lord, can I? Okay, I'll tell him at the end. Thank you. Holy Spirit, remind me again. I found this encouraging. 
who forgives all your iniquities. This was written before Jesus went to the cross. Amen. Think about it. The writer here wrote, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I could say it like this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't quit. Bless the Lord who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Amen. He, he declared this before Jesus. Before Jesus was even born of the virgin birth. This, somebody had a revelation. Somebody had a revelation of who Jesus really was. And when he would come and what he would do. Somebody had it. Now check it out. Who, he, who redeems your life from destruction. Do you think the writer here had issues in their life? Or was he more special than the rest of us? Was he, was he like a little more loved than the rest of us? And he didn't have no issues? He, you know, he wrote this because he was on an on a island and, and they were bringing him little coconut drinks with umbrellas and he had a hot tub and he was just enjoying life. There no issues, no problems. He hadn't done anything wrong. No, we're not that dumb. We know the truth. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Think about it. So here he writes, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I've not lost my place. I'm asking the Lord how I say this because I, I want to say it in love. Christ lives in you. If you're born again, Christ lives in you. So for anybody who may have just heard something, I'm saying, and the word of God says, Christ lives in you. Jesus Christ. If you've been born again, you've been born again of an incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. And Christ lives in you. Thank you, Father. Where do we leave off before I got on track? Verse 5. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Now, in the natural, I thought, oh, that's like chocolate and brownies and no. <laughs> No, no. Hold your finger there and go to that other scripture I gave you, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 is our other main scripture. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. This is going to be in reference to that squeezing. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? Here it is. For out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. Out of the abundance, out of the overflow of your heart does the mouth speak. So when you get squeezed, that's how, that's, how, that's how we know where we can clearly use some help, some correction, some love, some patience. When you get squeezed and out of your mouth does not come the goodness of God. Am I, am I, am I hearing you? Or are you hearing me? Are we catching it? Okay, go back to Psalms if you would. You can write that down, look at it later. I mean, yeah, go back to Psalm with me. Verse 5, let me read it again. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Now, there's another scripture that we're all very familiar with here. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Look at that. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. Remember a couple of weeks ago we looked at how to guard our heart. And in guarding our heart, we have to guard what comes in so that what comes out is life. 
Because if we're speaking death out, there will be death. If, if, if we are not speaking blessing, if we're, if we're cursing instead of blessing, if we're in doubt and we're speaking that doubt out, it puts a path. Remember, Proverbs says that, that, that out of the abundance of the, no, um, out of the heart comes the issues of life. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Oh, the Lord executes righteousness. Righteousness is a good King James word. It's basically the right standing of God, the rightness of God, the fullness of God. You are made righteous. You have been made righteous and truly holy. Christ lives in you, and there's righteousness in there. You have been made righteous. Oh, where did I leave off? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 7. He made him... He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. Now, now think about that for a minute. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. If you go and look, the people of Israel did not want to go into the presence of God. They wanted Moses to go in, hear from God, come out and tell them, what to do. It was God's will for all of them to be in the presence of God, to hear his voice and to follow him. Did you hear what I said? It was God's will that he reveal himself and his, his ways to all the people, but they were in fear. They responded in fear and doubt and unbelief. They limited God, and they said, mm -mm, you go. You go, find out, and then come back. Now, I know none of you have done that because you're here this morning. And you may have come to hear from God, and yes, you may have come, and thank you. You may have come and said, you know, I know pastor's going to bring a word, and I want to be encouraged. Well, thank you. But that means whoever was up here could have spoke the word of God, and you could have heard it and responded to it. Does that make sense? Because there's coming a day that as no matter who's standing right here, as we deliver the word of God, because you have already heard from God, it brings confirmation to your heart. That, that the things that I share, you'd be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I read that this week. Oh, glory to God. That's how you get an amen corner. That's how you get that. Because they're like, oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Because Christ in me and Christ in you, they bear witness as the word of God has spoken. And you're able to go, mm -hmm, that's right, preach it. Not be, you're not going, yeah, that's right, preach it so my wife can hear it. You're saying, that's right, preach it. I need this. Am I making sense? Yeah. Hallelujah. That is a great place for all you men to say amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what verse? Verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. I'm just getting in on that because... Sometimes I struggle. I know none of y'all do. Y'all got it down. But sometimes, you know, that anger comes knocking at my door and spirit of slap comes with it. And yeah. Jesus in me is going, just wait. Wait upon the Lord. I'll renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings like eagles. You can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. Do you hear me? Amen. Come on now. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Oh, 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 oh. hallelujah. Look at verse 10. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. What? This is, y'all know this is the Old Testament, right? This is under the Old Covenant. This is part of the first half of your book, the Bible. The writer here says, he, that's God, has not dealt with us according to our sins. That's a pretty bold statement coming out of the Old Testament. I have been asked not to come back to places. 
Because I have said that right there. <laughs> Under the new covenant. Think about it. He has not dealt with our sins, uh, not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Oh man. How many of us, how many of us need our minds renewed right here? How many of us really need our minds renewed? Maybe write that down. Psalm 103.10. Now, I didn't make this up. I'm showing it to you. That's in the King James Bible. Oh, hallelujah. For as the heavens, verse 11, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Now, now that just came after... The previous verse, y'all get that? Verse 10, then 11, back up to 10. Let's read it again. He, the writer here declares, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as, high, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. Verse 12, as far as the east is from the West. Could this be the Old Testament again? Did y'all move? Did, you, did we move? Y'all seeing Jesus in the middle of the Old Testament? See, when we began to see Jesus even in the Old Testament, we just, we just, we just, we just went to some greater understanding, some greater revelation, some greater depth in our knowing God, in our intimate, in that fellowship place. Look at what, look what, look what, oh, look at, look at this. I mean, y'all know this is anointed, right? Y'all know this is the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from, what is that little word down there? Uh, us. us. Holy Spirit wants me to let you just read again in your own Maybe some of you want to read it in your out loud to yourself, kind of blessing your soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have. You have removed our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. That's, 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 that's good. That's good. Verse 13. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he, for he knows our frame. He remembers that, what, that we are dust. Same writer. And remember this all started with two men in fellowship. God and man face to face. And the writer begins to bless the Lord. The writer begins to command his soul to bless the Lord. He commanded himself. And look what he does as he's doing this. This is what comes out. This is what's beginning to get pinned. This is what's rising up from the inside, from the anointing of God. And he declares the goodness of God. He declares the fullness of God. He declares the mercy of God. Did, did I read that verse? Verse 14. He remembers that we are dust. Verse 15. As for man, his days are like grass. As, the, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. Now see, that's, that's really actually a very deep thing. Do, you, do we realize how short life is? Do we realize that what we're doing right now on planet Earth is something that is the shortest amount of time that will do anything? Because when we're in the presence of God forever. See, that's where we can take rest. We can be like, oh, thank you, Lord. This too shall pass. Thank you, Lord, that in a number of years, compared to eternity, I will not remember this pain. This heartbreak, this, this frustration. How many of you have, 
I, I well, don't raise your hand because I don't want you to. I don't ever want to embarrass anybody, but I have done it personally where I said something or did something, and I'm immediately I'd like to pull it back and go. Oh, I wish I would have responded better. Can I get a witness? Anybody? So, and then to try to eat the crow, you know, it's it's like now. See, I learned a long time ago, crow tastes better with salt and pepper, and so I, you know, there's. Sometimes I'm like, all right, give me my salt, give me my pepper, I gotta go eat. And I just gotta eat the crow and I gotta humble myself and, and get after and apologize or make it right and go to somebody and say, you know, I overreacted or I got in front of this or whatever, right? Now, how many, that was painful. Has anybody been there? You, you, you literally, and you really do, you feel bad, you hurt somebody's feelings, you, you, you didn't really want to do it, but it came out, or you did it, and now you like, oh man, and, and you feel bad. Well, that's good that you, quote, feel bad, and then you, quote, fix it, okay? You go and repent, you go apologize, you, you try to make it right, and sometimes people accept that mercy, they accept that grace, and they let you, or, or they forgive you, but then in your mind and in your heart, you're like, ah, and you start playing it over and over in your mind. And Well, if I'd have done this, but if they would have done that, I wouldn't have had to do this. And then, so now we've just twisted it around because you rehearsed it and you played it over and over. And what are you doing right there? You're not blessing the Lord. You're not focused on him. You're, you're out of fellowship in that sense. Yeah. Because now you're worried about the, the, the thing that happened on earth. This scripture tells us that it's just going to pass away. And in 10,000 years, one of you are going to walk up and go, Hey, you remember when you said this? I'm going to be like, mm -mm. I'm going to have to be like, okay, give me, a, give me a refresher course. Like some of you. I'll be like, okay, give me a refresher course. Run me down again because I, I don't really remember that. See, so no matter what's going on. We need, to, we need to be able to go, okay, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. I can walk this out. Because compared to eternity, this is just a little dot on the page. Does that make any sense? See, this is, yeah, this is just a little hashtag. This is just a little blurb. And, and God's grace, his mercy, his, his loving kindness. Oh, 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Now look at this. On those who fear him. You, you might want to catch that. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children. That's not a promise that everybody gets. Notice the, the clause. Those who fear him. Those who fear him. There's a clause in there. Verse 18. To such as keep his covenant. How many of y'all are covenant people? How many are, I mean, if you're born again. You're of the covenant. You, you, have, you have been born again. You've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and placed in the kingdom of God's dear son. So you have a reason to rejoice. You have a reason. You have eternal life, which is knowing God and knowing his son forever. Never being separated from the presence of God. Let that sink in. There's some, there's some shouting right there. Verse 19. I'm going to make it through this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels. We're going to find it out. You just wait for it. Who ex ex excel, ex ex excel, who excel in strength. Who do his word. Did you catch that? Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Now, he's talking straight to the angels. He ain't talking to you and me. Just for clarity. 
You don't become an angel. Angels are their own created beings. It would be a demotion for us to be angels. If you don't understand that, why do you think Lucifer was demoted? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 21. Bless the Lord, all you, you his host, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure, who do his pleasure, Bless the Lord, all his works. So if you weren't included in the previous part, you just got included. You just got pulled in if you missed out on the part about um, all, his, uh, all his works. Uh, I guess it was verse 21. Bless the Lord, all his host. If you don't feel like you're his host, if you don't feel like you're his minister, you who minister his word or do his, or do his pleasure. Bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. His dominion. See, the kingdom of God, Jesus said the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is in you. You know where the kingdom of God is? Where God reigns. Where, where, where we Surrender and let him rule. And we and let him rule and reign over us. Where we align ourselves with his word, not our word. Not our way. His way. Does that make sense? Now, bless the Lord. Did I get that one? Bless the Lord all his works in all his all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Now, go back to verse 1. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. So I'll do it this way. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In your mind, when those words are said, and those words are coming out of your mouth, if you can agree with me and agree with God's word right now, and declare, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. What do you think the word bless means? Write it down. Do not say it in your out loud. Because remember, I never want you to look bad if you're wrong. And sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we're not. Let me, let me fix that. You're just not complete. How's that? We're on the right track, but how many of y'all want to know more? How many of y'all want to know what that word, the fullness of that word? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let, let, me, let me put it to you this way. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You see that? So when we think blessing, we often think tangible something going from one to the other. Like if I'm going to bless you, nobody would turn down. If I reached into my wallet for whatever reason and I said I want to bless you, most of you would say thank you, right? Okay? Because you're like, oh, cool. I can use that blessing. That's just... That, that's the smallest meaning of this word. Come on. This word... Now... now Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He's telling his mind, his will, and emotions to kneel. It means to kneel. Not bow. There's a difference. Because I can kneel without bowing my head. Mm. Think about Peter walking on the water. He can kneel before the Lord, his God, his maker. And never take his eyes off the Lord. We're his kids. He wants us looking at him. But in kneeling. Now, now, now. Come here, Gus. Gus is physically a little bit taller than me. I'm better looking in case you were concerned. But he is a little bit taller than me. And he might even have a little bit bigger, um, whatever this muscle is. 
tells you how much mine are, right? But if I kneel before him, I'm actually a whole lot weaker. I'm also in a less, I'm in a more vulnerable position. Does that make sense? Thank you, Gus. Good illustration. All you had to do there is stand there and look good. Those are the easy ones, right? Stand there and look good. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Now, no, 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 no. Think about it. You're commanding your mind, your will, and emotions to kneel before the Lord. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of transformation. So blessing the Lord isn't just about the words that come out of our mouth. I wanted to give you the, uh, the Strong's number on that for those of you who would like to go and look that up. It's number 1288. And it does mean to kneel and bless. To kneel slash bless. Kneel, bless. Most places it's used as to bless. Here, it's primarily the kneel. When he says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Kneel before the Lord. Kneel before the Lord. Is that making sense? Is that making sense? Now, I want to I wanna read this again real quickly and we'll, we'll land. We'll find a landing spot right here. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all of our iniquity. Who heals all our, all our diseases. Who, re, who redeems our life from destruction. Do we understand that as we bless the Lord, as we surrender, as we kneel, a place that's used, I think it was like first, no, Second Chronicles 6.13, the same word is used that... Um, I think it was Solomon who kneeled before the Lord at that altar. He kneeled before the Lord at the altar. He surrendered his life before the Lord. As we bless the Lord, as we kneel before the Lord, look what comes out of this, the heart of this man. He begins to see the goodness of God. He begins to declare the goodness of God who forgives all of our iniquities, who heals our diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. We've all been in situations We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that when we're really, really honest with ourselves. We're like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Amen. We've all been there. But notice we're not living there. Mm -hmm. Notice that here we're commanding our soul and our mind, our will and our emotions to bless the Lord, to get your eyes back on the Lord. Don't worry and don't stay. The enemy is the one who keeps circling the wagon and reminds you of your imperfections, who reminds you of your flaws, who reminds you of your shortcomings. The Holy Spirit does it. The Holy Spirit is going to lead you in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm not saying he ignores it. I'm not saying that he's not going to deal with you. Because look at these, these scriptures. It is so amazing these scriptures are often only referenced at a time of salvation. They're often only referenced when we want to encourage someone to come for the first time to receive Jesus. But we see here a man who could not be born again. Jesus had not been born. He had not been beaten. He had not been spit upon. He had not died. And he had not rose again the third day when these words were penned. When the psalmist from within began to declare the goodness of God. And he declared, he prophesied. <laughs> you knew I'd get there, didn't you? <laughs> She's been waiting on me to get there. She's like, just say it, Paul. He prophesied. Hallelujah. What will you prophesy? What will you declare? 
Now remember, out of the abundance of the heart will the mouth speak. And remember, our goal here is to have seed for thankfulness. Our goal here is so that when we're squeezed, the goodness of God comes out, not all the stupid. When you're squeezed, because we've all been squeezed, and I got good news or bad news, however you want to put it. You're going to get squeezed again. Some of you might get squeezed before you get out of the room. Some of you have been squeezing you since you walked in the room. So if you were squeezed and the goodness of God is not coming out, how do we transition? How do we take it to that next level? It's about you and the Father face to face. And you, and you declare, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll bless him, if you'll kneel before the Lord, your God, your maker, if you'll kneel before him, if you'll surrender your life to him over and over, day after day. But it, most importantly, when you get into that place, if you have not been in an intimate place with Jesus, don't wait any longer. Don't wait any longer. For that matter, I think we're going to land right here. I'm going to ask Bill to come back up. And we're going to give you opportunity we're going to sing that song again. We're going to sing that song again. This is my desire. And you make it your prayer. This is my desire to worship you. I know I didn't give him a forewarning, but he's good. Let's all stand. We're going to, we're going to, I want to pray and dismiss the, the, uh, the, uh, the video. I want to thank you. We're going to take some time. And worship God and allow the Holy Spirit to take us from where we are to where he wants you to be. They need the name of that song. It's not. This is my I give you my heart is the name of the song. I give you my heart. I want to thank you. We're going to take some time. We're going to pray. We're going to continue to worship. I will pray with you. I will agree with God's word with you. If you call me, email me, text me. Let's connect at, at whatever it takes. But this week, I encourage you to get in the presence of God, you and him face to face, and follow out what we just read on Psalm, Psalms 103. We're going to do that now. We're going to shut the video.